this is Lauren Garner at Cal Poly, and we are here at our rootstock um, trial that we are running with Patty, Mary Lou, and Peggy from UC Riverside. And so this is one of multiple sites where we are looking at the effects of these different rootstocks on Hass avocado trees. So San Luis Obispo here um, is our northernmost site that we have going. These trees were planted just last year, and so they've been getting well established. The goal, the major goal of this trial is to try to take a close look at these root stocks that are already known to provide, um, to most likely provide resistance to Phytophthora. And so as the majority of you already know, um, the that pathogen is one that is a huge problem for avocado growers throughout the world. We have a large number of tools in our toolbox that help help us to try to deal with root rot from preventing it, um, some methods of chemical control, uh, control of irrigation, um, at trying to make sure that the roots um, don't stay too wet and the tree becomes more likely to be infected, or we've provided an, an environment that really allows the pathogen to grow well or to spread easily through an orchard. Um, and then we've had um, in our industry a relatively long history of being able to use rootstock that are resistant to Phytophthora, but that resistance is somewhat limited. And so there's been an additional long history of avocado rootstock development and breeding at UC Riverside. And so they now have several um, rootstock that they're hoping will soon be available for commercial uh, licensing and use by our industry. And so one of the things that we are doing here is we have three of those rootstock and we have DUSA, which is one of our industry standard rootstocks. They've all been grafted over to Hass Avocado. And so we have them here in this orchard so that we can evaluate um, not just their potential resistance to Phytophthora, but also the effects, any effects that these rootstock might have on Hass avocado, whether those effects be positive or negative. And so um, we've had, like I mentioned, we have these trees in, they got planted last summer. We did our first evaluation of the trees approximately two months later in August. And just last week, we did a second evaluation of these trees so that we now have data on their height, um, the trunk diameter, um, and also their general overall health. For the rootstock that we are evaluating, though the primary objective of the study is to um, uh, confirm that they are indeed resistant to Phytophthora, there are a lot of other potential benefits that these rootstocks could have. And so we have evaluated our trees for issues such as um, tip burn due to salinity, heat damage that could occur, um, how much they are flushing, how much bloom is actually being produced. It's obviously too early to be evaluating them for yield. Um, and we are, but we are very excited that we've already been able to find a few differences um, between our, um, between the different rootstock. And so one of the things that we have been able to find is that we've got um, one of these new rootstock has actually actually resulted in trees that are taller than those that are on the DUSA rootstock. We also were able to find a significant effect on perseamite damage to, um, to some of our trees. So we're interested in continuing to take a look at that. We are fortunate to have um, a very good water up here. So the trees that are at this particular orchard aren't really being challenged with respect to salinity, but I know that at some of the other sites that is being evaluated and some differences in salinity um, tolerance have already been detected.
Um, and we did actually, um, unfortunately, have them challenged by heat. Um, we uh, reached 120 degrees on one of our thermometers here on campus um, during the last um, summer, and that's an awful lot um, for well, everybody, um, but also for the avocado trees themselves. But fortunately, um, we had very um, little heat damage. And to um, so far, based on our analysis, we haven't seen um, a difference that's related to rootstock. Um, we've also been very fortunate with respect to, um, to mortality. Um, the trees have all um, survived the initial planting and we were fortunate enough to get um, really good deer fencing up around the entire orchard so that we haven't lost any just due to to normal attrition. Um, one of the other things that could be very exciting um, for us is if any of these rootstock actually allow the trees to be just healthier and more vigorous in general. Um, I'm sure that the majority of you have already heard about laurel wilt disease, and though we are fortunate to not have it in the state of California at this point, um, we do have to anticipate that it might get here along with the beetles that actually carry it and could cause avocado trees to get laurel wilt disease. And it's been found that trees that are healthier are much less likely to be fed on by the beetle and therefore less likely to get laurel wilt disease. So though we hope to not have these trees challenged by that particular beetle and disease, we do feel that it could be helpful to the industry if we are able to find um, anything that would indicate that any of these rootstock might uh, enable the trees to just be healthier and resist more pest fresh any other pest pressures that might be coming our way. So this land has actually been in avocados for a long period of time. And so since we've been managing this area, we found that we had a section that unbeknownst to us previously was just much more shallow um, than we thought it was and not draining as well as we thought it was. And so when the trees began to wilt, um, we mistakenly thought that they they were in need of more water and what had actually happened is that the trees had become stressed due to the the land being much more shallow and they had it became obvious to us later a little later on that phytophthora had started to become a factor in the trees health um, before we were able to correct that we were um, we had one of um, the more um, wet rainy seasons in recent history. And so the Phytophthora that had been partway up this hill spread very quickly down the hillside um, during that rainy period. Um, as it turned out, um, we, um, we ended up meeting up, uh, Johnny Rosecrans and I ended up chatting with Tim Spann and Ben Faber at one of the last California Avocado Commission and Avocado Society meetings to be held on Cal Poly's campus. And so I still remember asking Tim Spann, hey, do you happen to be doing any um, Phytophthora rootstock trials and he asked me if I could use several hundred trees. And so it turns out that this was just a, a really fortuitous setup. It's not a whole lot of, in fact, I assume it's no um, growers are actually happy to find out that their um, trees have Phytophthora, but there's really no better place to actually test um, Phytophthora resistant rootstock than in an area that's known to have a history of Phytophthora. We, in order to know that these trees are resistant, we, we really do have to know that eventually they're going to be 
challenged with the pathogen itself. And so um, we were, um, as, I, um, as I know that uh, Johnny Rosecrans has explained, the orchard got put in um, in this same area, um, not just because we needed to replace the trees, but because it was just a really excellent win-win. Um, at our site here, um, we are actually fortunate that we were able to set up this orchard in a way that is both um, commercially um, appropriate in terms of the spacing of the trees, the way that they're put up on berms, the way they're being irrigated, um, and also that we have the trees um, in in rows based on um, based on which rootstock they are. So the trees are in in groups of eight, nine, or ten trees, all of the same rootstock in a row, so that even as this orchard gets older and the trees might start to root graft with one another, we will still be able to detect effects of the different rootstock on yield and um, other aspects of growth. And so we're fortunate that we were able to set this up in a way that's both very statistically robust so that we can get good data to report back to the industry, but that it's also commercially applicable that we're not looking at one tree of one um, on one rootstock next to another tree on another rootstock where those um, where we might have different confounding factors occurring. Um, so what we do have out here um, is um, at nearly 400 trees that are in here. The trees that we're able to take data off of that are off uh, that are on the three uh, rootstock that we are testing against DUSA um, are also being being, um, we also have additional trees that were donated by CNM Nursery that are available so that we don't have, say, unused space or gaps within a row or between rows. So that again, our results are hopefully going to be um, fully commercially um, applicable and useful to our industry. Um, and so that's um, one of the things that we hope will make this project um, as useful to the industry as quickly as it possibly can be.